or mobile, or other, what is the information in which mobile can strengthen the competency of extension officer, right, in, you know, changing behavior of people in going into uh, conservation farming. Uh, we shouldn't forget what we have learned in 20 years of agricultural extension when we are talking about the role of ICT for agro-advisory, right? You know, you, you cannot, you know, this is the point, you know, we cannot expect that mobiles are going to change behaviors. And if you are looking for this question for your impact, you know, it's the wrong question, right? It's the wrong question. We can't expect mobile to change behavior of people. They can raise the awareness, but we can't empower people. People empower themselves, right? So, and this is proven in all kind of behavioral studies, you know. It doesn't count, uh, you know, the message. is your readiness mm. to change that makes a difference. I wanted just to make it clear so that, you know, these questions are not going always in yeah. circle. Yeah. I do not have a question, but just to add to your point about the study of uh, behavior again, I mean, this may be a debatable question, but uh, CABI has another major program in the world called PlantWise, where basically we operate uh, community-owned plant clinics, plant health clinics in the remote villages. And these are typically operated by the farmers themselves and we train them. So there are two such studies, one at Bangladesh and another at Bolivia is now available in the public domain. And uh, the outcome of the study is like that the farmers who uh, probably saved some uh, few hundred dollars more because of the improved uh, crop protection practices they adopted, on most of them, uh, over 90% of them involved them, in, I mean invested that money in life, uh, livelihood improvement activities, like buying a cycle for the son so that he can go to school. Somebody bought some, uh, in Bolivia, somebody bought a mobile handset with for better connectivity. Somebody got themselves treated on all this kind of stuff. I mean, a very small portion of that money actually reinvested into the agriculture. Now, I don't know whether that is good or bad, but one thing is sure is that whenever we do an intervention to the farmer, at the uh, agriculture level, it is not, it is not li getting limited itself to the field of agriculture. The farmer thinks in a much broader perspective from the farmer's life point, point of view. And uh, that mobile is giving that opportunity. So probably like a classic example in IKSL is that IKSL is primary in agro-advisory. But in the helpline, we get all sort of questions which has nothing to do with the adv advisory. And in some cases, health and other issues have also been transmitted to the IKSL channel, which is not also agro-advisory, but farmers are loving it. So when we talk about this mobile or any kind of information uh, technology, information communication technology, we need to look at holistically, and then probably we'll get to the answer that whether and it is changing any behavior, and if it is, how much is the impact? But my question is that this holistic uh, all information, uh, whether you feel that it should be disseminated through mobile or mobile uh, has some constraints of giving uh, other informations? Well, the, these questions cannot be answered in yes or no because it depends. And it, the first thing is depends on the technology because mobile technology is progressing rapidly. At one end, we have dumb phones who support very, very limited uh, kind of data transfer capability. And on the other hand, we have uh, uh, the smartphones who are actually better than the computers. Yesterday we saw that uh, yeah. we now have 800% more computing power than the Apollo mission to uh, moon. So now whether the farmers have access to smartphone or down phone, it's not actually in the purview of the development people like us. It's the market forces. Yeah. Morning, one gentleman from Reliance was talking about 4G, and they are already have a big plan about the 4G, which is even better than 3G. So all these things will keep on happening. So we can't really uh, say that, well, this information can be delivered, this cannot be delivered, everything can be delivered if it is properly designed. Yeah. What is most important is, uh, as Survi and Paolo has identified, if we know who the target audience, what impact it's going to have, and then give that information, then probably we can have uh, 
our uh, small lever which connects us from the input to the output. So uh, these people who are in Bolivia and Bangladesh actually they had nothing to do with mobile because the plant clinic is a face to face activity. But when they got that money, because the mobile is going on in their surrounding, so they invested to buy that phone and buying that phone they got more information. So they might thought okay, uh, this extra money let me invest in my child's education, which is a complete different dimension. So uh, we'll be closing this. Okay, any question? Yeah. I just wanted to add a, a few thoughts to all of this discussion that's just been going on. Um, uh, and I think talk, talking of behavioral change and talking of actually access to knowledge and decision tools, where we are right now, we're designing services for the mobiles people have. We're designing for SMS or voice services because it's the phones people have. Uh, and so we're naturally limited to these micro messages, we, as we just heard, that, that can give a limited amount of knowledge transfer. But, but actually, if we start looking at where those phones are going to go, if, if you tell me that in 20 years' time every farmer has that same phone, then, then, then I'm sure nobody in the audience would believe you. So the question is, what is that phone replacement cycle? How quickly those more advanced or more capable phones get in the hands of people and maybe we should be thinking about designing services for those. Now, given that we might have a more advanced phone in a farmer's hand, then, then what can we imagine? Now, now, there's also this talk of we can't change behavior through a phone, but, but actually, I, I'll give you an example where I have seen behavior change. Uh, I've been trying to use uh, video conferencing for 15 years maybe using ISDN, using other things. I'd say the first 10 years it had zero value to me. Couldn't use it at all. Now everybody is more familiar with Skype. Now we can link multiple people in multiple di different locations. And we sort of figured out how to communicate and how to share a file and a bit of information as we're communicating. So, so, so the meeting behavior, the distributed meeting behavior and how we can actually work across those meetings has changed in corporate cultures. Now I'm sure that there are issues about how you recreate a, a farmer field school using a mobile. But, but actually, what is it? It's a trained extension worker who knows what to do and what to say and the questions to ask and how to stimulate thought. Actually, you could probably deliver to some level those learned skills of how I deliver that workshop environment through some video type training. It could, could easily be on TV as well in terms of training the extension worker, but if you can train them on the video and then actually support them through the process, you, you might not get as effective as a very well-trained FAO field school, but, but you might get something better than nothing. Uh, and I think that's the, the process we've got to follow. So uh, <coughs> I think time is up. Uh, we, you can discuss in the tea time now.